everyone. How are you today? It is Friday. My name is Shelly and I'm here from Ocean Connections. We uh, have a special little journey for you guys today. We are going inside the fish house. You know, you come to our facility and you walk in and you can see all the beautiful animals and you see us out there doing our jobs and taking care of them. But what you don't often get to see is what else happens within our day. And a big part of our days is food preparation. It is the fish house. So we're gonna go check that out. So for those of you that are joining us, we are uh, Ocean Connections. I'm Shelly. Grab your quarantine buddy. Please settle in. We've got, oh, you know, about a half hour of really fun material for you today showing you our behind the scenes. Make sure that you interact with us. If you have questions as we go through the morning, oh my goodness, please ask us and tell us where you're from, where you're tuning in from. Because that's really fun for us to see the, the reach here also. You can hear in the background some noisy sea lions. Everybody's waiting for a meal, so I think we'll have to get in there pretty quick. We're talking about something very important today, which is food preparation. Join me guys and let's go into the fish house. It's always a busy place. Hi, Stephanie. Hey, everyone. So there's always somebody in this area. This is the fish house. I want to introduce you to Stephanie. Stephanie is one of our trainers here. She's one of the people that helps take such great care of these animals. And today, we are showing everybody what happens behind the scenes. Yeah, tell everybody a little bit about what we're doing, Stephanie. All right, everybody. So today, you guys get to learn all about our fish preparation or diet preparation for the animals around today. So we've got a bunch of different types of fish here. We're going to introduce two types to a little bit later. But first of all, why don't we start at the very beginning, which is right over here at our menu. So you can kind of see right behind Shelly, we've got our diet board here. So each and every day when we come in, the trainers spend usually about one so maybe even four hours doing fish prep every single day. So it does take a very long time to kind of go through all of that diet preparation throughout the day. What you'll notice about our diet board here is we have all of our animals' names listed here on the side and all of their what we call training sessions or feeds throughout the day. So you can see right now our animals are on four feeds every single day. Sometimes that can be six feeds a day. It all kind of, and everything is different. Sometimes it's a training session. Sometimes it's a husbandry session. Sometimes it's just a play session. Um, but we kind of vary that all throughout the day for our animals to make sure their day is really fun. So you can also see all of our animals here are getting a different amount of fish every single day. So some of our animals are younger, they're growing. Some of our pups, like Reese and Moana, are really only going through about eight pounds of fish a day. Or some of our older animals, that are very large, like Diego, who's our adult male. He's eating about 20 pounds of fish a day. So you can see he's bigger, he's larger, so he's gonna need more fish. The pups are also growing, so they're eating a decent amount of fish as well. Um, and some of our juvenile males are also growing, so their fish is gonna be a little bit larger as well. So all of those, the amount of fish that the animals get varies by size, by age, and by season. So you'll also notice in the winter time, we are going to be eating, they're going to be going through a lot more fish in the summertime when they're going to be eating a little less. I think that's really important because I think that, you know, when you guys go and, uh, well, let's look at this. When, when they're hungry and it's morning time, you go downstairs and you open up the pantry and think, what do I want to eat? And maybe it's a healthy bowl of cereal or some bacon and eggs or maybe it's some candy or some chocolate or something. Um, your, your days are always very flexible and everything has different nutritional value. Now we make our sea lions and our seal stays very flexible too, but their diet is very controlled. We're going for optimal health with them. And so we don't just toss fish into a bucket. There is quite a process for that. First of all, we know exactly how much every animal eats, right? Exactly how much they eat. We keep track of it, we keep records on every single animal. If fish comes back from a session and it's not eaten, we actually keep track of that. It goes into what's called animal records. Maybe we should talk about where we get our fish from. Sure, absolutely. So all of our fish actually comes to us frozen in blocks. So why don't you come on over this way? We'll show you guys a little bit more behind the scenes here into our refrigerator where we have some fish thawing out for 
the next day. So you can see all of our fish comes frozen in blocks just like this. We actually go through a two day thawing cycle where they come out of our deep freezer and they actually are thawed for two days before then we water thaw them to make sure. So let me show you a little sneak peek of what our fish looks like. You can see it's all frozen in big blocks like this. So we have like this one is a herring for example. So all of this fish gets frozen even right on the ship then comes to us and stays frozen up until the morning that we feed our animals. So you can kind of get a good view of that, what that looks like. So our process starts two days in advance, right? Yeah. And we buy our fish from fisheries. And those are the same fisheries that supply aquariums and zoos. The quality of fish is restaurant grade. It, it's, it's sometimes better than I think what we might buy a grocery store. It's very strictly monitored. And when you get that fish and it comes in in big blocks, comes in on a, a freezer truck, and we uh, unload it into the commissary, which is sitting on the other side of our park, it comes up to us in a week's supply each week, right? And then big boxes are brought out. What happens once the, the fish comes in here on a daily basis, Stephanie? Well, usually, like I mentioned, we have, we unload it all, we put it in our deep freezer here as well. So that freezer is also kept at a very low temperature, below zero actually, usually in the negative 10 to even 40. So it stays very, very cold. We then thaw it, like I said, in our two fridges, and then we thaw it in our water sinks in the morning that we feed our animals. So, and, that, and that happens on a big load. I mean, there are, yeah. how many pounds of fish do we go through in a day? Right now we're going through about 120. Uh, 120 pounds every single day. In the middle of winter, it's over 200. Yeah, that's, a, that's a crazy amount. When you look at our board, it could probably be a little confusing to what everybody, they look at that and go, that's a code. What is that code, right? So we're using a couple of things. First of all, across the top, T means training session. Right now, the animals have four training sessions in a day. Sometimes they have six or seven. Just depends on uh, what's going on in that day. And right now we're operating on a reduced staff so that there is minimal people here, just enough to take care of all of their needs. But we're in two different teams because we don't want any crossover because of possibly being able to um, spread a virus. If somebody came down with the coronavirus, we we're making sure our place is sanitized top to bottom every morning, every night, and then we work in different teams so that the animals will always have somebody that's here that's taking care of them. But in the summer, that would say show one or there'd be a program that would go on. Because it says training session, the trainers can do whatever they want. And so sometimes that's fun and running around and playtime and other times we're learning things. What do the different colors mean today here, Stephanie? So those are in code for the types of fish that we're feeding our animals. So out in the wild, they're opportunistic feeders. Yeah, so what does that mean? Them. Opportunistic it feeder. They're pretty much going to take any opportunity to grab whatever they can get their teeth on. So they get out the wild, might eat octopus, they can eat all squid, fish, squid, smelt, herring, anything that they probably can catch. Because remember, if they're swimming in the ocean, you gotta find the fish and you have to be faster than the fish and they have to be able to catch them and grab them. So, you know, there's some work involved here. That doesn't that doesn't happen for us. And so we can choose their fish and we make sure that we are balancing it nutritionally, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So let's show the two different types of fish here we have. So in code in blue is actually stands for Caitlin. So Caitlin is a small water-like fish. So you can see it's full of water, small minnow lake. This is our capelin, like I mentioned. So this is really going to provide the animals with a lot of the hydration. Um, the second type of fish that we feed our animals is herring. So we, right now, are currently feeding kind of a fattier herring. We're coming out of the winter season. So they need a lot of those calories to keep them nice and warm and get that blubber on their body. So this is a herring. You can see there, it's a lot bigger than our capelin. It's kind of like our animals cheeseburger or big piece of chocolate cake to provide them all of those calories that they need. So those are the two types of fish we're feeding now. Our herring is a 
Mary and Caitlin. So that's kind of what you're seeing in those different colors there. Well, Stephanie, looks like, we've got a looks like we have a visitor here with us. You know what? Hi, buddy. How are you? Diego has decided to join us. How are you? Can you say hello? <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Very nice. Good job, buddy. So uh, let's take a look at how he's eating as a reminder. This is a cake one. Yes, you may have it. Let's open that mouth and take a look at those teeth. Remember, he is an opportunistic feeder. He's also a predator, and that means what? That he preys on another species or two or three. So those teeth are very important for catching and grasping. But take a look at this. Nope, he does not chew those fish at all, do ya? I know you see her back there with even another bucket of fish. Let me show you. Here's one of his favorite treats. Watch how he swallows it. One, two, three. Oh, seriously? Yeah. You didn't want the herring today? All right. I'm kind of surprised. I put that one over to the side. When it goes on the ground, it is no longer able to be fed. You know what? Sometimes Diego says, I prefer capelin or I prefer herring. He is not one of our animals that prefers the fattier fish all the time. He loves his capelin. You want to come say hi to Stephanie too? Hi. How are you, bud? Okay.
and we're learning a little bit about what all goes into preparing that fish every day. All right, perfect. Let's talk about sorting a little bit here in more detail. All right, so like I mentioned, let's start from the very beginning. Like I said, start over here at our menu. So let's bucket for Diego. How about let's do his last session of the day. So we're going all the way over to T4. Diego's getting two pounds of capelin and two and a half pounds of fatty hairy. So how do we do that? Let's start with our fatty hairy. We are gonna make sure that he gets two and a half pounds exactly. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check each and every fish to make sure it's a good fish and it's not being, and he's not gonna be fed a bad fish. So what does that mean? So if you look at our fish, as we're looking it over, we're checking to make sure that the fish has both of its eyes. We're making sure that it doesn't have any cuts or abrasions in its skin or body. Does it have all of its fins? So I'm checking all of the fins as I'm looking over this fish. Another way that you can check to make sure that the animal is healthy is you can look at their gills. So the inside there are their gills. If they're that brown or red color, it means that they have not, lots of nice oxygen. It means it's still a healthy fish. If you see more of a clear color or any other color like black, it's usually a sign that that fish is not good anymore. So if it is not a good fish, it would go down our grinder and we would not feed it to the animals. However, this looks like a beautiful hearing for Mr. Diego. So because of that, I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in our bucket here. And you can see our scale weighed out that that one hearing is actually already half a pound. So that is pretty awesome. So we are gonna continue doing that, looking over each of our fish. Checking them over, making sure they're good fish. So you can see this one actually has a little cut here at the top. So because of that, we would not feed this fish. We would actually get rid of that fish, grab a new one, and make sure that it looks very healthy. And why is that important, well. Stephanie? Because we take a lot of time to sort through the fish, but yep. what's the reality on, on a fish that's questionable? It could harbor bacteria, and that is the last thing we want to do is feed our animals a fish that can make them sick. So it's really important they do have any cuts, that is an area for those pathogens to be able to get into those fish. So we're definitely making sure and we're taking every precaution that we're not feeding any fish that might, might make the animals sick. The great thing about our fish, they're always frozen, and when they're not frozen, they're always in the fridge. So they should never be able to grow bacteria anyway, but it's just always something we're going to talk about. And once they go out to the pool, if they don't get used, then they're discarded. Anything that's not used at the end of the night is also discarded. But the animals are so important to us, we take no chances. That, that is always our priority. So we bucketed up our hair, right? Yep, we are almost there. We need two and a half pounds. All right, we're at two and a half pounds. We stick it in a cooler, again, keeping that fish nice and cold all throughout the day. And then we can sort through our second type of fish, which like I mentioned before, is our capelin, that hydration fish. So looking through our capelin, we're doing the same thing. Each and every capelin gets checked over from head to tail to make sure that it is a healthy fish. And there are no cuts in them at all. And then they go into the bucket. So as you're sorting, as we're bucketing, we're looking through every single fish. And that takes a little bit of time, which sure. is why sometimes this just takes hours and hours to, to get through all of this. And as you can see, we go through a lot of fish on a daily basis. And it's amazing how quickly they reach it. Oh, it's amazing. They can gobble it right now. Real fast. All right. Excellent. All right. So all the fish gets weighed out. We know exactly what's going out to every session. So at the end of the day today, we know that Diego has four and a half pounds in that last session bucket. And then the trainers can, can choose to do whatever they would like to do with him because sessions are always very, very different. Because we uh, weigh everything out and we record it both before it goes out and after it comes back, if there's any coming back, it's one of the ways that we can really ensure animal health because there are 12 animals here, but yet records are kept on every single one of them every day so that we are keeping track of how much they ate. We're keeping track of any environmental changes that might be occurring. We're keeping track of any medications or vitamins and we keep track of what an animal's behavior is on a daily basis, all allowing us to be able to formulate a nice picture and put that with voluntary medical work that the animals help us with, and it helps
helps us to ensure that they are healthy and happy. All right, All right. so, so we we're almost there. Done with Diego's diet. We use little name tags to help us distinguish which diet is for which animal so that we make sure that everyone gets the right amount of fish. Perfect. That goes right on top and then this gets put right in our refrigerator, which you can see is already filled with most of our diets for the rest of the day. So you can kind of get a good view of how that looks in there. Another thing we do right away in the morning, as we've already mentioned, our fish gets thawed. Because of that freezing and thawing process, some of that fish can lose a little bit of nutrients. That is true for any food that we have. So because of that, we actually can give our animals vitamins. Just like we take. Exactly. Yes. The daily vitamin. Yes. Which so are specially formulated for marine, for marine mammals. mammals. Yep, exactly. And so just like you take your vitamins every day, so do the sea lions. Now a lot of people are going to ask, well, how in the world do they take their vitamins? How do you train them to do that? Well, nice little trick. We're not going to go ahead and we'll, we'll pill it because they already got their vitamins today. But we can simply take that vitamin and tuck it right into the gill of a fish. And guess what? The animals do not know that they are getting it, but we can keep them nice and healthy. So... Just a, a little trick that we have up our sleeves. All right, so Stephanie's going to put away all of this unused fish because we'll be needing that later on today. Do we have any comments or questions I need to be aware of, Brittany? No questions, okay. but a couple people saying I remember those days back when they used to do fish prep. Um, probably don't miss the smell. We're really glad that you guys at home don't have smell of vision it does smell very fishy in here. <laughs> it, when you go through 120 pounds of fish every day, it does smell fishy, there's no doubt. There's usually a bottle of lemon juice in the refrigerator and um, lots of laundry that is being done on a regular basis. So we are here at Ocean Connections, we went behind the scenes, but I think it's important to go out in front of the scenes now because guaranteed, we have some animals out there that would love a little bit of a fish party. So let's go make that happen. All right. So, you know, I talked about the fact that we do several sessions in a day, um, and they, our job is always to make it fun and interesting and exciting. You know, just like we're probably all kind of tired of staying home right now because we're tired of doing the same thing. We make sure that these guys never do the same thing. Things are always very interesting. We're, pa we're passing a transport crate right here as we go out. And that's one of the things we have the animals do is just practice getting into a crate. What if we had an emergency? Yes. We do have a question. Um, Kimberly would like to know what happens if a vitamin falls out of the gills of a fish? Well, that means that we didn't tuck it in far enough. We throw the fish away, we throw the vitamin away, and we do it again. And luckily they can have their vitamins at any time of the day. So, and you know, sometimes we come out to do sessions and an animal might not be hungry. And that's okay, There's, it's not a big deal. We can, we can wait and make it positive for them at another time. And that's absolutely fine. All right, Brittany, we are out at the pool and there are a lot of animals out here. Now, sometimes we do training sessions and then other times, I'm gonna tell you what, we just have fun. So, we're gonna have a little bit of fun real quick. Stephanie has something called uh, ice pops right there, fish pops, and that's some enrichment. And so that's just fun stuff. We have lots of animals out here. We have got Talise over here on your left. We've got Colby. We have Diego. We've got Moana and Reese. Hey, you guys, go swimming. Let's go. Go get it. Some of the times when we come out, we simply have a fish party. And it looks like we have animals that just want to steal the camera. How funny. They don't even care about the fish. Well, Stephanie, I'm going to let you take this. Okay? And right. you can have fun with the animals. Thank you, my friend. So this is the best part of all of that fish is watching the animals eat it. Very, very funny that Diego's up here going, you know what? I already ate in the back. I'm not really that hungry. And that's absolutely fine. Their appetites change according to the weather, the season. This up and down bit the, with, that we're seeing with the weather certainly affects their appetites too. When it gets cold, they usually eat more. When it warms up, they eat a little bit less, just like we do. We've got Satara over in the middle there, who's popping her head up. 
checking out to see what all the sea lions are doing. Surprisingly, she's not going for any of the fish. We like to come out sometimes and just toss fish to them and just make it very, very reinforcing and fun. A lot of people think they're always training and, and uh, doing behaviors for us, but a lot of times we play a hide and seek, we run around, we just do enriching fun things with them. Okay, guys, well, we are at Ocean Connections. We just wanted to give you a little glimpse into what goes on in the beginning of our days every day. If you have questions, feel free to write them, and we will be glad to get back to you. Um, I would like to remind you that, hey, we absolutely appreciate any kind of donations remember that even donating ten dollars is going to feed any of our pups for a day and if you want to feed an animal like diego for a day it's about twenty dollars and a hundred dollars feeds the entire group for a day so remember you can support us at oceanconnections.org or venmo at ocean connections we hope that you have a great easter weekend like us on our Facebook page because next week we are coming back to talk about animal training. So we're going to be poolside both Tuesday and Friday at 11 o'clock. Thank you for joining us, Diego. Bye, everybody.